Yo gang, the trick I'm gonna show you in this video is used by some of the best AI providers in the world like OpenAI. And what it does is if you have an ongoing AI generation, a running stream, it becomes unbreakable. The user can close their laptop, they can reload the page, they can have a network interruption or five of them. It doesn't matter, your AI stream will keep working in any case. This is super useful, man. And if you're building an AI app of any kind, your users will probably love you for it. And the thing is, this sounds fancy and complicated, but we're gonna take a look at the infrastructure and it's really easy to do, man. It's fully deployable to Vercel. It works on the newest Next.js 16. Let me just show you. So what's that trick, Josh? How do some of the best AI providers in the world, like Anthropic, OpenAI, T3Chat, man, I'm telling you, use this trick I'm showing you in this video to make their user experience extremely good. Well, let me show you. Let's head over to the network tab. Write me a small poem. This is Anthropic with Sonnet, one of the best models in the world. And that's going to trigger a completion request right here. What kind of protocol are we even using here? What does Anthropic use for their AI that we might be able to use for our AI as well? And the answer is right here, content type text event stream. So this is a SSE, a server sent events connection. And if we go into the response, we can actually see the protocol that Anthropic uses for their own web UI. So we know this is going to be kind of good because this is one of the best AI providers in the world. What can we learn from this? right? First off, they have their own kind of protocol here, like a content block delta. And each content block here contains the chunk of text like here, here. So these are individual tokens that Anthropic sends along through their SSE protocol. So they are streamed on the front end. Now that is not the trick, but it really helps understand how these providers implement what we're about to do. If I ask ChatGPT, write me a long poem, and I'm going to hit enter, we are able to refresh the website and the text will continue streaming. So I could refresh midstream and the generation will not stop. It will go on no matter what happens. And the same happens in T3Chat, for example, here. How does AI work? I can just refresh the page right here and the stream will not care. It will not break. And that makes for a really, really good user experience. Because what are some scenarios where stream could break? For example, an AI stream can break if the user has a mobile data interruption, right? If they're walking around with their mobile phone in their hand and something goes wrong, the entire generation might be lost. Or if the user closes their laptop, man, it can be really mundane things that make an AI generation break. And the infrastructure behind how these interruptible, durable streams, whatever you want to call them, work, are extremely interesting because we use two of my favorite primitives in Redis. Now, really quick, what is Redis? Redis is an open source in-memory data structure store used as a database cache and message broker. Very fancy words. Basically, it's open source technology, like a really fast database, right? Redis is super, super nice. It's one of my favorite tools of 2025. I really enjoy it. So let me just pull in the Redis instance and show you. One of my favorite ones of all time that we can use in Next.js 16, 15, whatever, and even deploy on Vercel is redis.subscribe, right? So I'm going to pull in my Redis instance and we can subscribe to, let's call it channel, right? This is the channel we're going to subscribe to that we're later on gonna send the AI chunks through and let's just call that sub right here and this sub has a on method that we can use for example on subscribe as soon as we are subscribed to the channel we're gonna log out subscribe and now comes the really cool part man if we do sub dot on there's a message handler for example we can say received message Beautiful. Again, this works in any Next.js server component, route handler, server action. This is what makes it so powerful because as you're going to see, implementing these durable streams in Next.js is really, really easy. So we are implementing a pub sub pattern in Next.js. Let's publish to a channel right here and we can just publish data, my data, any message that we want to publish in Redis. This is the most important primitive that makes durable AI streams possible. If I run the demo file right here we are going to subscribe to this channel perfect and as you can see the file has not stopped executing this is still running because this is a persistent connection that we're establishing to our redis database and as soon as we're publishing anything to that redis database like my data here let's run that file here we go we're going to see receive message right in traditional ai messaging setups we always have a persistent connection between client and server and technically i have been lying to you because 
Anthropic doesn't actually use the persistent protocol that, for example, OpenAI does, right? So if I say, write me a long poem, and then I refresh the page, the user has a network interruption, closes the laptop, anything happens to this connection. On Anthropic, maybe because they're not the best engineers, man, maybe because they're using Angular, I don't know what they're doing, the generation is gone. So I just went ahead and refreshed the page. This is the only large AI provider I could find that doesn't implement this really, really nice thing. I don't know why, to be honest, but they use a setup like this, right, between client and server. And if anything goes wrong in the client connection, the server can't transmit data anymore. And we also don't have a message history replay, right, with OpenAI that's different. If we refresh, then first off, it replays all the messages up until the point that we last saw. So, and then it streams in all other chunks, right? So this works really, really well together. So we have a client and then we split responsibility because right now this server, right, is responsible for two things. It's generating the AI stream, for example, using the Vercel AI SDK. And then also the other responsibility of the server is streaming to the client. And that's not great because now we have one service with two responsibilities. And we want to split that up. That is probably going to be a bit smelly code. So the easy thing we can do is just have our client and we're going to implement one publisher and one subscriber. So the only thing the client has to do, right? The user, it's really stupid. It just needs to trigger the publisher once. That's going to run the AI generation. And then it needs to read the current state of the AI stream from the subscriber, right? That's it. Like architecturally, this is really, really easy. Now, the question is, how does the subscriber subscriber and the publisher, how do they communicate, right? Under the hood, these are just two Next.js routes. And the answer is really easy. They communicate through Redis, right? So the publisher publishes with the same primitive I just showed you to Redis. And then all the subscriber needs to do is to subscribe to those Redis events, right? So it's notified in real time when a new AI chunk arrives. So all the client needs to do is trigger the publisher using a regular fetch call. The publisher publishes AI chunks to Redis. The subscriber reads them from Redis using subscribe, and then the client can read them from the subscriber via SSE. So this is the app I built to demo you this. What are the latest trends in AI? Just with that pattern implemented, we can actually refresh the page right here during the generation. It's going to continue streaming in the data and it's extremely fast, right? If I say, write me a long poem and you watch how fast this data streams in, this is not a persistent connection between client and server. This is proxied through Redis. And that's what allows us this real-time looking stream, right? But technically that's going all through Redis. The final piece, if I have a chat, write a long poem, how does the stream know which messages to replay up until the point where we refresh the page. Let's get rid of all the code here just to kind of clean up this mess. I'm going to rename the publish to xrev range. Sounds fancy, but it's actually going to be really, really easy. And the demo I'm going to rename to xadd. So what we can do in Redis is use a really, really cool primitive called Redis Streams. This is one of my favorite discoveries of the year 2025 in development. Redis Streams are extremely OP. Basically, they're a data structure you can use to absolutely store any amount of information, right? These are extremely memory efficient, like event sourcing, tracking user actions in an analytics software, sense monitoring like IoT devices, right? You can insert so much data per second into this notifications. And these are extremely memory efficient pairs of a timestamp. I don't know. Imagine this is a Unix timestamp and data like my data. So the point I want to get to is with Redis streams, if we have like an on-chunk handler that runs for every token in the AI stream, we should store that in a Redis stream over here. And because these are sorted by Unix timestamp, we get replay functionality, right? We can say, give me all chunks that the AI generated from this Unix timestamp and onwards, for example, right? If we have some delay here, we get extremely memory efficient replay functionality. Vercel made their own package for this called resumable stream. And I think that's at like, I don't know, 50,000 downloads per week or something, even 100,000 downloads per week now. V0 uses it, opening I uses it at extreme scale, right? All these big providers need what I'm showing you in this video. And it's actually really easy to implement. All we need to do is say await redis dot 
x add, which is the command to add to a stream, right? And this takes a couple of things like the key. Let's do channel, like the message ID. We're going to let it automatically generate an ID, which is going to be the Unix timestamp. And then lastly, we can enter, I don't know, my data, for example. This would be the actual content of the chunk from the AI. If you now go ahead and run that, TSX x add, let's run this file. We just added an AI chunk metaphorically to this Redis stream, right? And all we need to do to get replay functionality is actually query it. So we can say const data is going to be equal to await redis.x rev range. So basically we are taking the entire stream in rev in reverse order channel because that's the uh, stream that we want to get the data from. And we're going to go from minus to plus. So from beginning to end, we want all the data in the stream. And let's just log out that data here. That's literally all we need to do, man. Let's run this file. Oops, I switched up the order here. It needs to be plus and minus. Bam. So we get replay functionality, right? If we try this again, if we added one more chunk to the AI stream, which in reality you would add like five chunks per second, right? This would be really, really fast as the AI is generating. Then let's try the query again. We would get all the data from the stream. So we have two messages now, this AI chunk and this AI chunk. And if for any reason we wanted to only query AI chunks from a specific time onwards, these are already sorted. Because streams are so memory efficient, we can say, give us only stream entries starting from this Unix timestamp, from this ID that you generate. If I run this again, it's only going to get entries from this point on and onwards. So we get this replaying of messages functionality. And that's the missing piece. If I go ahead to a new chat, write me a long poem and I hit enter, it's going to generate an ID. And as soon as we refresh all chunks up until this very point right now, were replayed from the Redis stream and all the new incoming chunks are then in real time submitted via Redis PubSub, the first primitive I showed you. And just with that pattern, you can implement an extremely reliable AI stream that survives basically anything you throw at it, man. If the mobile data interrupts, if the user closes their laptop, it is absolutely crazy what you can do with this. And if you want, you can make a lot of money with this. So I think the principle behind this is just super, super interesting. It works really well. And if I show you the entire code that I used in this example right here, the fully working open AI like version, that's also extremely fast, by the way, you're going to see this is comically easy to implement, man. This is it. Right? If I zoom out a little bit, the entire thing is like 64 lines of code and it's just AI SDK, man. So we're, we have a result stream and for every chunk of the stream, for every AI chunk, you just emit that message. And under the hood, this does two things. First off is the X add, so it adds it to the Reddit stream history. And then the second one is the publish so that we can subscribe to new events right here, right? So we replay the history of the AI chunk event and then we just enqueue that data using SSE, server sent events to the client. And that's how we get extremely durable AI streams by just changing up our infrastructure a little bit to this pattern right here, from the client to the publisher to Redis, and then the subscriber can read from Redis and publish to the client. Seems confusing, maybe, I hope it's not. It's, it's kind of a difficult concept, but I hope I explained it pretty well. Thanks so much for listening, man. I really hope you enjoyed this video. This was my first video in like a year, man. Kind of crazy to think about and that I went for such a like, difficult technical concept. I don't know. I hope you enjoyed, man. I, I really like this pattern. I hope I could share that enthusiasm with you. Thanks so much for watching and I'm going to see you in the next video. Until then, have a good one and bye bye.